You're listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is episode number 44. Welcome, my beautiful friends, to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I hope wherever you are today that you're having a wonderful day. So the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast for anyone new is a podcast designed to inspire, empower, and support you on the journey of uncovering your truth and purpose in the world. So welcome, my friends. My name is Letitia Ringe, and today I'm talking to you all about overcoming fear and creative blocks so that you can share your message. This has got to be one of the most asked after topic for me to talk about and the one where I'm hearing you guys and there is a lot of struggle and this makes complete sense to me because it's something that I have struggled with and have been working to overcome actively (laughs) throughout 2017 and 2018 in a major way. So I want to share with you today some ways that will help you in overcoming this fear and creative blocks so that you have the confidence to share your message. Now, before we go into that, I just want to let you know that I'm recording this episode from Bali today. So It's quite loud here. There's a lot of like cars driving past or scooters and motorbikes. I can hear cows. I can hear birds. I can hear roosters. I can hear so much life around me. It's incredible. I'm staying in this beautiful eco-friendly place and it's designed like a traditional Balinese hut or villa and it's so beautiful and So I wanted to actually record all of my episodes before I left for Bali, but something told me to wait, to wait to record them because, well, I guess I wanted to share some of this Bali magic with you all. And I also knew that I would be by myself for some of this trip. And so it's amazing to see how much space you have in your life when you do travel by yourself. I have been just, this has been, this trip so far has been such a wonderful way to kickstart my creativity in another major way and to be receiving so many beautiful ideas and clarity and I've only been here for two days, (laughs) not even. So that just goes to show the power of space And no matter who we are, it's always important to make sure that we have time to ourselves. Now, I didn't think I was going to talk about this today, but it's just come up. And as I say it, I realize how important it is to know this. One of the things I always (laughs) say is that when I was not in a relationship, one of the things I really loved about that time was that I had 100% control of my time to do whatever I wanted with it. And I did. This was a time that I used before I met my wonderful fiance, Llewellyn. Before I met him, I went through my first journey of rediscovery where I was getting to know myself and really taking care of my body and just learning so much about how I worked and what I needed to be happy. And it was so beautiful. So I spent all of my time trying to do things that would support me. I I would work out about seven days a week, which you might say is too much, but I actually, I just so enjoyed it at the time. I was going to yoga. I was just having so much fun connecting with my body in a really significant way. And I had so much space in my life. And one of the things that when I moved into my relationship with Llewellyn and that I knew was going to happen from previous relationships that I've been in was that I would be giving up some of that space to make room for a partner. 
And this is what happens, but it's not just if you're in a relationship with someone else. And actually, this fear of having your space taken away from you can actually be a really major block to attracting a partner in your life and to having a committed long-term partner in your life. This is a big one for many people and many of the clients that I work with, because if you're new to my work, one of the other areas that is a big passion of mine is helping people find love. I believe that everyone deserves to have a beautiful, loving, committed long-term partnership and that it is truly so wonderful to see just the possibilities for you when you are in a relationship and having that deep level of connection. And there's so many little shifts that we can make (laughs) just to bring about that deeper sense of connection in our relationships, whether we've already got one, in our friendships, in you know our working relationships, but also in attracting someone who is going to give you that deep level of connection that we all crave. It's I really think this is the meaning of life, this connection with each other. So that was a side note, all to say that solitude, whether we're in a relationship or not, is really important. And I think if you are in a relationship, it's something that you've really got to consciously make time for. You've got to say, okay, I need to make sure that I always have time to myself as well as for my relationship and as well as for all the other things I do in my life. And if you're not in a relationship, one of the ways we can stop ourselves from having that solitude is through our friendships or our work. So we might be constantly around people and not making the space to have that solitude. And this is really important for for creativity. So I didn't even think I was going into today's episode yet, but we're already here. Solitude is so important for creativity. So when you have creative blocks, something that can be really helpful is to give yourself some space. So move away from whatever it is you're trying to do to just have time for yourself. So connecting with nature, going and doing something that's completely unrelated to the project that you were working on, but giving yourself just space to be. And this makes a lot of sense because creativity is an aspect of feminine energy and creativity requires space because feminine energy requires space. We have to create space to be able to receive the feminine energy. So there's just a little tip before we actually go into today's episode on the power of solitude. And this has been inspired through my trip in Bali, which has been so wonderful so far. So just to give you guys an update, I'm in Uluwatu. Uh, I have two full days before my retreat begins. And this is the retreat with Britt and Tara from Elevate the Globe. I'm so excited to be doing this. Um, So I'm getting picked up today as I record this episode. I get picked up at 1 p.m. It's about 7 a.m. in the morning as I record this. And so far, I've just been exploring Uluwatu. It's a beautiful um, town right on the coast that people come to surf. So it's a great surfing town. And yeah, it was really interesting because I arrived and it was kind of, it was like 6 p.m. So it was starting to get dark already. So I didn't get a good sense of what the place was like. I arrived to my villa and everything was really, you know, starting to dark. I went out to grab something to eat. It was really dark. I came back. Um, I had a couple of, you know, guys sort of talk to me and I got a really uncomfortable feeling on the way back because it was dark and I couldn't really see everything around me and I was on this main road and so anyway I had barely any sleep I <laughs> I instead of sleeping I decided to watch um I feel pretty the movie with Amy Schumer three times on the plane and it's because it's so incredible it's like literally up there with my number one like favorite movie with Clueless, The Notebook, and The Holiday. So I loved this movie so much. Anyway, I was so, so incredibly tired by the time I got to Bali, had had barely any sleep. And even in the days leading up to my trip, I was so excited. So I wasn't sleeping properly. And so I get here and I'm a little bit on edge. It's all dark. I can hear, you know, just people, so much noise around me because this is what it's like over here. It's a lot louder than what I'm used to. 
and so many strange sort of sounds. I have this really big villa. It's two stories. It's beautiful. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, am I really safe here? I'm a lone female traveler. I looked up this information, you know, for females traveling alone. And it was saying to be really careful and particularly in the area that I'm in. And so after I'd had that experience when I was out and I felt really unsafe, I was thinking, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Anyway, so as I'm here experiencing all of this, I did I had a little prayer with myself and I said I just said please please make me feel protected. I'm safe. Let me bring this feeling of safety with me wherever I go throughout this trip. And let me feel and know that I'm protected. And so I sort of called on, you know, the ascended masters and my angels, my guides and just said please can you give me this sense of feeling of safety and protection that I know that you're with with me and that I I'm okay and everything's okay. And so the next morning as I woke up, beautiful sunlight, you know, the light with any darkness changes so much. We have so much perspective. And so I woke up and I decided to, okay, let's start the day fresh. I'll go outside. I'll go out for breakfast. I'll walk on that same street I was on. And as I walked out, um, the host of the Airbnb here, I saw her and I said, you know, is it safe for me to be walking out on this street? And she was like, yeah, it's absolutely it's safe. And I said, is it safe for me to walk to, you know, the closest beach? Uh, And she said, yeah, absolutely. You know, you'll be absolutely fine here. So I had that permission and I walked out and I spent the whole day out, you know, just exploring the area, going to the beaches. And but my first stop was breakfast. And it was so it's just so amazing how life sends you exactly what you need. And I had this I sat down in this cafe and there were no seats available out in the open area at the front, only inside the cafe itself, which is also still kind of open. It's called Suka Espresso. If anyone goes to Uluwatu, it's got beautiful food. And so I was sitting down at this table and this dog came and sat next to me straight away. And wasn't getting too close because, you know, you got to be careful over here. You don't want any wild dogs to bite you or to be licking you. It's not good for rabies or so I hear. And so anyway, I, but I never felt afraid of this dog. It just sat next to me with enough space to not be, you know, like touching me or licking me, just sat next to me really calmly, beautifully. And I thought, oh, this is so nice. And then later on, I looked down and he or she was sitting on the other side of me. And then as I left the cafe, the dog came with me to go walk down to Padang Padang, one of the beaches here. And so you go down this big, long track to get to the beach and the dog is walking always in front of me, but always looking behind to make sure I'm still there. And I took a little video of it. I I shared this on Instagram as well. So you might've seen it if you're listening. And I just felt, I suddenly realized that, oh my gosh, this dog is coming with me to the beach, has been with me at breakfast, and I feel safer because I have this dog around me. I feel like people think, you know, I'm a local. And it was just so fascinating. So I walked down and it was quite, you know, like at least a 15 minute walk. We're walking along this um, this road, this dirt road, and then there was this car full of people around and I had, and the dog still stayed with me. And then I went down, you know, all these steps to get to the beach itself. And at, on the way I was stopping and looking at all the beautiful offerings that had been left out uh, in Bali here. They have like beautiful flowers and incense and fruit and they leave it out in front of like the different statues that are around. And these are left out as an offering to the God and the gods. And um, as I understand it, they do this like three times throughout the day because there's three different, you know, prayer times. And so it was just so beautiful. I was stopping to look and at every one, the dog would stop and look with me and, you know, look back to, you know, see what I was doing. And I just felt so connected the whole time. And then he would move forward and, you know, just be looking out while I was there, you know, taking photos or just allowing me, giving me this freedom to do what I wanted, but still being there and making me know that this this dog was there with me. And so then as I walked out onto the beach, you know, I started to have um, some of the locals, you know, say hello. 
and asked me whether, you know, I wanted a sunbed and all of this. And I was like, oh, no, you know, no, thank you. And then and the dog was still with me. And so we walked to the beach and we're walking along the beach. And then I sat down and I was just looking at how beautiful it is. And the dog came and just sat next to me, still never touching me, never licking me, just and with this great sense of peace and safety around me. And I realized just, you know, oh my gosh, I've been sent this dog to give me this feeling and to to let me know that I'm safe and protected. Everything's okay. And because just before that, as I was, I got to the beach, I thought, wow, this is really secluded. There's not a lot of people around, you know, anything could happen to me. I'm this, you know, solo female traveler. Is it really smart of me to be here? And then moments later, I had this feeling of just, you know, everything's okay. And also then there were more people coming down and joining and it it was absolutely fine. And I was fine the whole time. But I wanted to share this story because whenever you need something, all you need to do is ask and you'll always find that you're sent exactly what you need. So just as I had that realization I looked over and I'd just taken a selfie with the dog and all of that and the dog was gone, nowhere to be seen. So I'd spent probably the last, you know, hour and a bit with the dog and as soon as I had that realisation that I'm safe and everything's fine, the dog left and I just think that's such a beautiful story. So it was funny and then I was telling my sister later that evening all about this and she said, you know, oh, was it a stray? Like did the dog have a collar? And I just assumed that the dog was a stray. And anyway, I was showing her the picture and she's like, the dog's got a collar. I was like, yeah. So she's like, so that was someone's dog. <laughs> so even more so people would have thought that you were, you know, a local because it had a collar. But also this dog wasn't even a stray to begin with. So any fear I had about, you know, the dog licking me or whatever, there there never should have been that fear anyway. And in any event, it didn't matter. So it was just so amazing to see just how much your perspective affects things and, and, and that message that whatever you need, all you need to do is ask and you'll be given exactly what you need. So Bali is an absolutely beautiful place and I'm so honored to be here. I feel so connected with myself today now that I've had some sleep and I've been able to see what it's like in the light and I just feel so grateful and honored to be here. And so I'm hoping that I get to continue to share some of this experience with you all because I want to bring some of this Bali magic to every single one of you. So I'm going to be yeah recording some episodes while I'm here and also doing some videos and and because I have this you know great feeling of space with me and this is I think because I am spending some time alone but also you know just shifting out of your usual environment it gives you this beautiful feeling of space. So a wonderful way to close off 2018. And before we dive into actually today's episode, which, you know, all of this is relevant though, I just want to share with you that I've made the decision to open up the five-day purpose training that I did in the Make a Difference Soul Tribe, which is my private online Facebook group for people who want to make a difference a heart-centered, meaningful difference in the world. So all of the people in this group are people who are high vibe, you know, love to be positive, um, want to come from their heart and want to make a meaningful difference in the world through showing up and aligning with their purpose. So really just aligning with who they truly are and what they are here to do. So I conducted this five-day purpose training as a live training in this Facebook group, and it was to find and show up for your purpose, five top powerful tools of mine to do just that. And I did this live and people joined and each day there was a challenge and I was going to only offer this training for a specific amount of time. But as I went to delete the videos from this group, I felt sad, like really sad about doing it. So I didn't, I didn't delete them. 
And I left, I gave myself some space to come up with, you know, what I really wanted to do next. So I just left it and thought, you know, I'll make a decision on this later when it feels good to me. And so sure enough, I'm in Bali and I think, no, actually, I'm going to continue offering this training for anyone who wants it. So there you go, my friends. If you missed out on the five day find your purpose training and challenge, I want to invite you to sign up and you will have access to those five day trainings. Obviously, the giveaways are not available anymore. We've had winners for all of those um, already, but there is a daily challenge and I recommend that you take part in it. You do the training over five days. They're an hour each. It's really helpful. Every single one has a guided meditation that's going to help you connect to your heart and your intuition, which is relevant to the way that I teach connecting to purpose and also the way I teach approaching life in general. So you have a daily lesson with a specific step that I'm going to help you take and a guided meditation to help you connect to your heart to um, find your answer. So if you would love to join that, then I invite you to head over to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash purpose. And if you're already in the Make a Difference Soul Tribe, just um, also sign up if you haven't already at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash purpose, because I'll be sending you a link to each of the videos so that they're easy to find. Um, If you're already in there, you should be able to find them under the announcements tab. But as we continue to have more announcements and more videos and things like that, it'll become really full quickly. So it's better if you do sign up for the training and the emails so that you have that easy link to access for each of those. And let me know how you go. I've had some incredible feedback on this training and many of the people who joined are now also joining me for our 12 month online mentorship that I'm running for 2019 and beyond. And that's activated, which is actually a great segue for me to mention again, that activated is enrolling now. And so this is for you if you want to dive in deeper to your purpose. So if you want to get a feel for what it might be like to work with me, I think it's really important that you do go and check out that five-day training. So definitely head over to LetitiaRinge.com purpose to be able to one, join the Facebook group and two, go through those five days of training. So Activated is a way for you to work with me in a group environment. It's an online mentorship because my community is global. You guys are from all over the world. And it's simply for you if you want to dive in deeper to your purpose and showing up for it in 2019. So all of these people want to make a difference in the world. You know, you've got heart-centered work. You are a light worker in some way. You might be a healer, a coach, an aspiring healer or coach. You might be a creative. In some way, you want to show up for the difference that you're being called to make in the world. And at this stage, you might not even know what that difference is. You might not know what your purpose is. And this is absolutely okay as well. So we're actually always, our purpose is always evolving. So we constantly need to be checking in to make sure that we are still aligned with what our purpose is. And so this is something that I am doing constantly throughout my year, you know, constantly checking in with my heart to make sure that what I'm still doing is the best way for me to be showing up and serving and is the difference that I am, you know, desiring to contribute to. And so through Activated, we were go- we're going to be making sure that we start off with a process to make sure that you do feel aligned with your purpose and the difference that you want to bring to life in 2019. And so a big part of that, as I explored in our last episode, which was all about the power of planning, every year I do an annual process. It's a month long process to make sure that I'm truly aligned with my purpose, but also coming up with an inspiring vision and heart-centered intuitive plan for the year ahead. And so I'm taking you through that plan with me. This is the first chapter to activated the 12-month mentorship. I'll be taking you through that plan and you'll get 
online coaching and support from me. So we'll have group coaching, which will be so wonderful. These are so so powerful. We learn so much from one another. They'll all be recorded so you can dive back in and listen to them again. And we will learn so much from one another, but you'll also be able to sit in the hot seat or submit questions and have those answered by me and then connect. And, And I'm also offering some free trainings to further deepen into this. So this is chapter one, coming up with a roadmap for 2019 and beyond. And then chapter two, which begins in March with the beginning of our astrological year. Um, From March to December, you'll have monthly coaching sessions with me, um, these online group coaching sessions via Zoom to help you bring to life that vision and the difference that you're being called to bring to life in 2019 and beyond. So this is to set you up with a really beautiful foundation, but to also get you activated in a major way. We tend to hold ourselves back and keep ourselves small to protect us. So working in this beautiful group environment and with a coach, so someone like me is so supportive, we just need to ask for help. So this might be just the way that you can give yourself that support that you need to truly expand and to show up for your message and what you're being called to bring to life in 2019. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you and you've been you know, maybe wanting to work with me or you've been wanting to work in a group or with a coach to really bring to life whatever your heart-centered difference is. And so, of course, this might be an online business, but it also might be a creative project, some other passion project, um, or you have no idea yet, then this mentorship has been designed to you. It's at a super affordable cost because I wanted something that would be available to you if you can't afford one-to-one coaching or if you want to work in a group environment. So you're going to get high level of support, monthly trainings every single month, monthly coaching every single month, and also my month-long process to create your roadmap. And then you also get another two additional coaching during that time. So and another two additional trainings as well. I'm also giving you monthly new moon guided meditations because I just absolutely love doing these and we'll have an online community so we can continue to connect and support one another throughout the mentorship and in between our sessions. So if this sounds interesting to you, I invite you to go over to LetitiaRange.com forward slash activated to find the details. Please know that there is a 25% off early bird discount that I'm offering up until the 13th of December. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that if you know that you want to join us. And if you're listening to this after, you know, the cost is still really affordable. So check out the details and I would love to have you join us. I cannot wait to see all of you who are joining uh, come together in this beautiful group because I know the power of connection. So Look, I know this is kind of a really, really long introduction, but we've touched on a lot of subjects that are important for today's topic anyway. So as I mentioned, we're talking about overcoming fear and creative blocks to share our message. So the first point to make here is that sharing our message is an act of service. So every single one of us has something that we're being called to talk about or to shine a light on. And this is whatever your heart is calling you. Anything that you feel interested or passionate or inspired to talk about, anything that you have an opinion on, anything where you feel like, you know, I have something to say on this topic. You're being called to speak or to share on this topic for a reason. And this is because Sharing is an act of service. When people ask you for your opinion, they want to hear from you. They want to know what you have to say on this topic because we learn from one another. There is so much to be learned from one another. So the first shift to make when it comes to gaining the confidence to share your message is to start seeing sharing as an act of service. You aren't there to solely benefit yourself by sharing and whether that's simply sharing your gifts or sharing your voice. This is an act of service to the people around you, the people who are going to hear your message. 
even if they don't agree with it. It is so helpful to get perspective from other people, to be able to see these different perspectives around us so that we can help to refine our own, to make sure that the way that we think we feel about something is still the way we think about that when we've been given the gift of a new perspective. So we always want to be truly connected to what our opinion is whenever we're one invited by our circumstances or expressly invited by someone to share our voice, to share our opinion. So start to see this as by me sharing my voice, which is simply my opinion right now, which is whatever I'm called to share right now in the moment. This is an act of service. I am serving other people by sharing my voice. This is a truly powerful shift to make. I continue to use this mantra for myself that sharing is an act of service. Every single time I feel like, oh, you know, should I really share about this latest offering that I have, for instance, like with Activated? Let's use this as an example. If I don't share with you guys like right now here what it is I am offering and have to offer, No one is going to be able to join this program. No one will have the gift of everything that I am offering through this program. And so, of course, there's always making sure that whatever you're talking about is truly aligned with what you believe. If I didn't believe that Activated was actually going to provide value, then I would feel a sense of misalignment with what I'm talking about. But because I know that Activated is going to give people the confidence and support and community and guidance that you need to truly expand into your power and to show up for your difference. And I am holding that vision for each of us of what we're able to achieve throughout a whole year of working together. Because I can see that, I can feel it. I know in my own life exactly how important it is to make sure I have a community, to make sure I've got guidance, to make sure that I'm working with a coach, to make Make sure that I have this beautiful support around me to truly show up for what is being called for me so that when fear sets in, I have a support system to help me overcome it. Because I see this, I know this, I feel this, it is an act of service for me to be able to share this message with you now, even though it directly benefits me by you signing up for this program. So what we'll tend to do is think that if I share my message or I share my voice, I'm the only one benefiting because either it's something that I'm promoting and I'm going to receive money or I'm going to receive, you know, some sort of status or prestige or I'm simply just shining my light and standing in my power so I'm being seen and so this is something I'm receiving from it. This is what our ego tends to take over in our mind. It tends to focus on and says, look at you, you know, um, shining your light. Look at you being greedy. Look at you, you know, wanting to hog the limelight in some way, you know, all of these things. But it's so irrational because what is actually fueling us, if we get really honest with ourselves, is actually a desire to serve and is actually a desire to be honest with how we're feeling by simply recognizing that however the way you feel on a topic right now and whatever you're being called to ask to share something on, you don't have to marry whatever that is. You just need to be honest with what you are in alignment with right now, with what you believe right now. We don't ever need to hold ourselves down or commit to the way that we believe right now because we are constantly growing and evolving. It's just like with our purpose. We can commit to living a life aligned with our purpose, but we do not have to commit to how that purpose takes form and to what that purpose is. Our purpose is to show up for our purpose in life. This is it. So just like with the message that we have, don't feel like you have to commit to it. If something is holding you back is actually, I don't know if this message that I have right now to share is actually the message that I'm still going to want to share in a month, in a week, in a year, in 10 years. And so this is what's holding you back from sharing. 
This is not the point. The point is to share in the moment because nobody is right or wrong. And whatever you share, you have to trust that someone is receiving exactly what they need. And that might simply be to know that the way that whatever that you're sharing or thinking is not actually what they agree with. So simply trusting that whatever we have to share is exactly what we need to share in that moment. We might learn something about ourselves through sharing that shifts our perspective, but we never need to commit to the message. We never need to commit to the way that we show up for our purpose. We never need to commit to to basically never having a different perspective. No, that's never going to happen because we want to be constantly growing and evolving as people. And when we grow and evolve, our perspective changes. And so our message may change. So that's the first step. Sharing is an act of service. And knowing that whatever we're creating, whatever we're sharing, we don't have to be committed to that forever. We can create it. We can share it. And then we can decide later that we believe something differently or we want to create something different. So I think that this gives you a lot of power, realizing that you don't have to marry whatever you're creating or saying. Simply, you need to share it and get yourself used to sharing because sharing is an act of service. Now, the next tool I want to give you is that the only way to move through fear and so a creative block is simply fear as well there's some resistance there to whatever we're trying to create and it's the same with sharing our message not having the confidence there is some resistance i.e fear there so the only way to move through fear is to take action And I'd like to make a distinction here between any action and love in action. So to take some action that embodies love. And so what is an embodiment of love? Believing in yourself, believing in what you have to say right now, being important, believing in your message and believing in your creativity in what you're being called to create. So the only way to move through that fear that is stopping you, that is causing the creative block or causing the perceived inability to share is needing to take action that supports you embodying someone who believes in themselves. So if it's a creative block by creating By sitting down, you know, Stephen King, I've heard this example used a lot. Every day he makes, he forces himself to write the first like shitty 500 or a thousand words. I can't remember exactly what it is so that he gets the magic out. So he just needs to sit down and write and write whatever, just whatever comes through him, even if it's a big bunch of crap to find the good stuff. Because action is putting you into momentum and it's a loving action because you're just trusting and accepting that whatever comes up is okay. And through that act of love, that is how you overcome the block and you start to get in your flow. And this is the same when it comes to sharing your message. Start off sharing that message in a way that seems crappy to you. You know, when I first started to practice sharing my voice, so before, you know, I launched this podcast, I was really scared to get on Instagram stories and to share a 15 second clip, which I know many of you will resonate with, with me speaking about something. I remember sitting there with my life coach and saying, okay, I'm going to set a goal and I'm going to share just once. Oh, and I'm going to do it today, a 15 second clip. Now that little 15 second clip and I sat down and I did it again and again and again, but by doing it and then by sharing it, that put me into action and into, sorry, (laughs) 
<laughs> and into building momentum. And so gradually I kept growing on that and sharing more and sharing more and sharing more. And I found my flow. You know, I created a podcast. I created this podcast because I had a serious fear of speaking in public. Every single time I was around people, I would feel like my voice was shut. It would shut off. I would have blanks all the time, every single time. And so this podcast was a way for me to not have the impact of what having people physically in my presence was doing to me in sharing my voice and also not having, um, you know, video, which I felt almost as like, okay, I'm there physically with people right now. This was shutting me off. It was stopping me in some way. So I found, okay, well, how could I get used to sharing my voice and sharing my message in a way that would work for me? And so I was really called to the podcast because, well, I love podcasts. This is the way I love to consume information. It's the way I find that I um, I really remember whatever I'm learning through podcasts because I feel like I'm not distracted by the video. I'm not distracted by looking at what the person looks like, how they're saying it, what's going on around them. I'm simply absorbing the message in a really deep way. And so I got into the momentum of then sharing my message through a podcast. And then ultimately this led to me showing up in videos and in-person events and trainings, feeling confident and not feeling that sense of, oh my God, gosh, I'm going to fail. I don't have anything good to say. I'm going to go blank. This doesn't happen to me anymore. Simply because I showed up. I took that love in action. I created the crappy 15 second video. You know, I got it out there. I shared it. And this led me to where I am today. Now, I'm not saying that I never have fear. Of course, we all have fear. Every unknown, there will be fear. But I know that the way through that fear is to take the action and to take whatever that embodiment of loving action is in the moment. Now, the next thing I want you to to know and to take away from this episode is that People also don't know what they don't know. So we can get kind of mad at the people in our life when they don't understand us. They don't understand our point of view. They don't understand our experience. They don't understand how we think about things, the way we operate, what's influencing our decisions, why we're here doing the things that we're doing right now what we do for work, what's meaningful for us. Sorry, I'm losing my words. We can feel like people just don't understand us. But the antidote for people not understanding us, the only thing that we have in control is making sure that we're sharing our perspective. People don't know what they don't know. So the best thing that we can do is to make sure that we're sharing with people what we want them to know so that they can better understand us. And this includes our message, right? We cannot have people supporting our work. We cannot have people supporting our message. We cannot have people even disagreeing with our message if they don't even know what it is. Now, this doesn't mean that everyone will support our message. We can't control other people. Remember that whenever you're trying to control someone else, you're always losing because we can never control them. But what we can control is what we put out there, what we project to the world, the message that we're sharing to others. So we want to make sure that we are communicating. This is who I am. This is how I feel. Today on this, this is my perspective on this today. This is what I'm feeling called to create today. This is what I want to say on this topic. This is who I am. This is what I want you to know about me. We've got to share this. We've got to share these details so that people are able to know One, what our message is, but also where it's coming from, what the intention is, who we are, why we're saying this. 
And so again, this brings me back to sharing is an act of service. And if you don't know what your message is, this brings me back to the very first point I made in today's episode, which is that we need to find solitude so that we can connect and find what it is we're feeling called to share. And this is a big thing when it comes to creativity, because creativity requires space. So if we, having, if we are having a creative block, this might actually be a call for space. And we might find space through just doing something completely differently or through finding solitude, giving ourselves time alone to connect with nature, but also to connect with ourselves, our heart, our internal environment. So a lack of of creativity, a lack of feeling like you're called to do something, to take love in action, might just be a call for space. And this is something that we explore in a big way in my online course, Embrace Your Feminine Essence. So if you really want to work out how to be more connected with your creativity, more connected with your inner voice, more connected to this feminine way of being, this passiveness, this creation of space, I invite you to check out my online course. It's there for you to enroll in whenever you want. And all you need to do is sign up at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash E-Y-F-E. This feminine energy, embracing my feminine essence is how I found my purpose. So it's one that I encourage. It's, it's a way of living. It's a way of life. I do this through balancing and working with my masculine energy, but needing to feel connected to your feminine energy, which is the aspect of ourselves that many of us are not connected with. And so when you feel a lack of creativity in your life or a creative blocks, it's usually you're being called to move in and shift into your feminine energy. And we do this through creating space and moving into this more passive Receiving receiving state that is so important to bringing anything to life, just as much as the taking of the action is as well. Now, another thing for you to understand about this is that a block is just resistance to trusting what you cannot control. So it's our mind coming in again. Now, remember episode 42, all about aligning with the heart and the difference between the heart and the mind. This fear that we have, these creative blocks, this is simply resistance coming through your, from your mind. The mind is creating a problem because it cannot control. So the antidote, the way to move through that is to simply trust yourself, trust what you're feeling called to create and trust what you're feeling called to share. And this will lead you to overcoming the resistance. It will lead you to finding what the loving embodiment, um, the loving action is to take next, what your next step is simply through trusting, trusting that you're being called for a reason and understanding that this resistance is coming through the mind and this programming of this fight and flight response that isn't actually a signal that needs to be or is warranted in this situation. Now, if you haven't listened to episode 42, I invite you to please go back. It's just a short one so that you really understand what this difference between the heart and the mind is. And know that we also go through this in the five-day purpose training. So again, you can sign up for that at letitiaringe.com forward slash purpose. We have got to trust ourselves more. And this ourself that I'm talking about is what our soul, our heart, our inner voice, our intuition, which I believe is just, we're all, we're talking about the same thing here, trusting your desires, trusting what you're being called to do, trusting what inspires you, what motivates you, what you're interested in, curious about, trusting these urges, trust that these come from the heart, from the inner voice, from the intuition. And so the fear that's being created, this is separate to the source from which these are coming. I think trusting is the secret to life, trusting ourselves, trusting others, trusting that we're supported by the universe 
And of course, this is a topic that we go into a lot of depth in. It's one of the favorite topics of many of the people who have done the course. Um, So yeah, this is one of the topics in Embrace Your Feminine Essence again. So if you're feeling, you know, I really don't trust, I have issues with trust, uh, I invite you again to check out Embrace Your Feminine Essence. You can enroll immediately, you get access to all of the course, and you also get access to all uh, future live intakes. And um, I do, you know, group coaching sessions throughout those live intakes. So you will also be invited to attend those as well at no extra cost to you. So definitely sign up at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash EYFE. I would love to have you join us. So if we don't talk about what it is we're being called to create, what our message is, what we care about, what our purpose is at the moment, who we want to serve, what we've got to offer. If we don't share these things and we don't trust our creativity and we don't trust what we're being called to share about, no one gets the benefit of it. Just imagine you're at a party or you're in some event and something goes wrong. Someone is hurt and suffering and there is a doctor there and they don't tell anyone that they're a doctor because they're too scared, right? They're, they think, oh, I don't want to share that I'm a doctor. I don't want to look like I'm bragging about the fact that I'm a doctor. And so they don't say anything. So people don't know that this is their gift. This is something that they are able to help with and something goes wrong and no one knows to call on this person because they don't know who they are. They don't know what they can help with. They don't know what they care about. Who misses out on this? Not just the person, the doctor from, you know, having the benefit of being called upon and to, you know, step up and to act, but also every single person there because they don't get to see that person's gift. They don't get to see them shining. And then the person suffering is obviously clearly missing out because they don't have the assistance of being supported when they need it. So I hope This is really resonating for all of you there. There are so many different tools that we can have to overcome these fear and creative blocks that get in the way of us sharing our message and creating. And these are ones that I have so much more I can share and talk to you about on this topic because mindset and is just, it's just crucial having, being able to understand how our minds work and how to connect with our heart and how we can create a supportive environment for ourselves is crucial to bringing anything to life. It's crucial to becoming activated and stepping up and showing up for our purpose. The clients we want to serve, the people we want to work with, the message that we have, it's so crucial. And these are just some helpful tools for you that I've felt in the moment are ones that we need to know and that I would love for you to know. So let me know what resonates for you most. Let me know your takeaways from this episode. And it's been so wonderful to talk to you today from Bali to connect with you here in the beautiful Mama Bali, this gorgeous energy. I'm sorry about the background noise that there will inevitably be, but I trust that the message is loud and clear and that whoever needs it is hearing this and being called to this um, episode in particular. And I'm so excited to continue seeing more of you signing up for Activated, my 12-month online mentorship for 2019 and beyond. Remember, there is an early bird offer until the 13th of December. So if you're listening before this, sign up um, before then so you can take advantage of the 25% off. If you're listening after and you missed out on the early bird offer, please know that you can still join us. We start on the 6th of January with our new moon in Capricorn to begin our month-long process to uh, build our roadmap. I'm actually giving you though two months to work through this. So know that you'll have some more space to create this beautiful roadmap for you. And then we will get to starting off the astrological new year, showing up for our vision and our purpose in a major way and getting activated together. 2019 is going to be such an expansive year for us, everyone. This year, 2018 has been one where a lot of us has been clearing out a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of change, a lot of transformation, 
And all of this has been beautiful and perfect because we are just clearing out what we need to so that we can show up in an even more expanded way in 2019. This is such a beautiful time to get activated together. Things are changing. The collective consciousness is changing. We're all waking up together. So let's do it together. Let's serve and expand and create this beautiful world that we're all feeling called to step into. It is possible. You are part of this. We all matter. Every single difference, no matter however big or small matters. And I want to take you with me. I want to see you shining in your power, showing up for the beautiful gifts that you've come into the world with. I cannot wait to see you there. Go to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash activated and let's get activated together. Remember, you can also join the the five day find your purpose training and challenge at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash purpose. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a beautiful, wonderful week. And I will see you next week for a beautiful episode to help you unlock your truth and purpose. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. If you feel called, I would love it if you could please take a minute to rate and review this podcast on iTunes. This helps other people like you find it. And I also invite you to take a moment to share this episode with a friend you know needs to hear it.